it's a pleasure talking at Falls Backstage again. Uh, I think, yeah, I've been involved in this conference since it began with the first uh, kind of test event, which was a smaller. And it's, it's always a pleasure to talk about these uh, community topics. So my topic today is um, how can you survive? And, you know, we know that our large online communities can be challenging uh, for, for many reasons. Um, you know, we, we work with people from different, uh, different backgrounds, different time zones, different companies, different styles. And it's always, uh, it, it can be, it can be a challenge. And there's many, there's many reasons for that, but uh, I'd like to focus on, on conciseness and clarity. As I've been active in the, um, the Apache Software Foundation mostly for the last uh, <laughs> 20, more than 20 years, actually. Um, professionally, I'm working for Adobe, uh, for the, the Basel office, and Adobe is also a large organization, and it's, it, there's many similarities be, with, be, between these communities, you know, be they open source or not, it's, it's, a, it's, a, large, it's a large community again. Uh, you might think this picture has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Actually, it is related, and we'll we'll see why. Um, let's start by defining what we're talking about. So clear writing is easy to understand with no ambiguities. You know, it's uh, the more ambiguous your writing is, uh, the more risk you have that it's misunderstood, and which can sometimes cause tensions or, you know, uh, make the conversations more difficult. And concise writing is as short as possible, but no shorter, we could say. Uh, and I think this is these things are very helpful because the uh, when we communicate in <clears throat> in writing, and that that's our context, you know, written communications in online communities, um, the 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 neuronal bandwidth, maybe if we want to say it like that, is low. It's you know if we talking face to face it's much more efficient you see what faces people are making if they are you can feel if they are understanding what you're saying but just looking at them in written form in especially in this asynchronous written form it's it's not possible and our communities can be large can be complex uh, so it navigating them in written form is is a challenge and i think really for me being doing my best to be concise and clear has helped a lot because you know, you improve the the the, the bandwidth of this uh, of this medium that that's difficult. Um, I think one of the maybe the, uh, the key thing to realize is that you are writing for an audience. You know, if you're talking to a colleague in a one-to-one -one situation, then you can really target your message for that person. You might allow yourself some jokes because you know the person well and you know that that joke is okay for them or maybe this one is not. So you select which one you're using. There's many um, unwritten uh, 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 things that happen when you're talking with that someone that, to someone that you know well. When you're writing to uh, your community on a mailing list, on a, on a chat channel or whatever, in, in a ticket, uh, in, a, in a, you know, a tracker issue, you are writing for an audience. There might be multiple people reading what you're writing, uh, each with their own different sens sensitivities, and and you know it's it's a very different. And I think that that's the key to realize that uh, you you have to adjust your written communications to be writing for an audience, so that your people don't get confused, and and so that your your message is clear. It's more like writing a book. You know, writing for a best-selling book than than just writing a quick uh, chat message. And too often we make the mistake of writing as if it was a quick chat message, which it is not generally. And so I think when you when you're writing in in the, the channel of your um, in your community channel, uh, maybe you think you just oh, okay, I'm writing a message, quick thing. And I think no. Uh, you're actually architecting a conversation depending on on the the language that you use depending on the clarity the conciseness of your message it will give a different shape to the conversation that you are having with your community or with specific members of that community and that's why i chose this picture of this house i think it's a <laughs> it's a brilliant design it's a, it's an obvious design it's 
concise it's small you know it's a maybe the smallest house that you could you could live in uh with uh one or two persons um it's very clear you see okay there's a kitchen there's a living room uh, and it's it's all very obvious and that's that's what we should strive for to, to you know to architect our conversations in a clear understandable and concise way And there are two types of conversations that we are having in our communities. Sometimes you have a quick question. You know, what's the, uh, uh, when did we release version 1.2 again? And, you know, the answer is very easy. There's not going to, hopefully, <laughs> it can even happen in our community sometimes, but hopefully such a question will not lead to a big conversation. It's a quick question. One, two messages and you're done. And those types of questions are easy in any medium. They're not much more difficult to have in written form than they are in, a, in you know, in direct spoken or, or on video form. The second category of, of conversations is almost, it can be a debate. You have to, to decide something. There are arguments for various, from various point of views. Uh, people might not understand what you what you're suggesting. You need to reformulate, to rework it, and it can last a long time. Uh, when we're discussing um, technical decisions in our projects, sometimes it lasts weeks, and you have maybe uh, I don't know. You have 10, 20, 50, 100 messages in a conversation that eventually leads, hopefully, to a, to a decision. And I think that's very hard in in written form, and that's something that I had to learn. Uh, you know, to be to be effective in in our open source communities, um, how to steer, how to, you know, how to keep these uh, these discussions focused, and I think conciseness and clarity helps a lot for that. And I think we need these conversations because the, we need them for the uh, the form of deep collective thinking that we're doing in these projects putting brains together to create great things. I have another talk called Share Neurons about that, which goes in more, more detail. I have links at the end of this uh, presentation. So two types of conversations, quick questions, those are easy, and the debates, the long conversations are much harder in, in written form. Blaise Pascal, a French uh, mathematician and, and scientist who, who lived in the uh, 17th century, uh, is known for this quote, I've only made this letter longer because I have not had the time to make it shorter. And, you know, writing concisely, it's, it's like simplicity in software design, takes a lot of work. It takes more work to be concise than to be verbous. Verbous, you know, you just express your ideas uh, as they, naturally as they come. Uh, but to be concise, you have to work and maybe rework your message. And I think that's a very important part. Again, spending more effort so that your readers have to spend less effort and so, so that the conversation is, is better. So being clear and concise is definitely more work for you. I think in many cases, you are architecting a conversation more than just writing messages. Um, there's a, another uh, saying uh, among uh, you know book writers or editors, write drunk, edit sober. Some people say that uh, quote by Hemingway is not totally clear, but it's it's common. The idea is that you switch personalities from the writer, which I'm, I'm not saying you should be drunk, but you know, which might be much more creative, much less organized. That's when you want the ideas. That's when you're verbose probably, and you write your thoughts. And then you switch. Oh, now I'm the editor. I change the point of view on my writing, and then I edit it to make it concise, make it clear. And that, that can be a lot of work. Personally, I like to switch formats sometimes. Like I, I might write something in Markdown and then I look at it from my browser. So the formatting is a bit differently, is a bit different. Helps me switch from, from my writer to my editor personality. And that, that's really useful. So again, work, refinement, iterations until your message is, is good. So I, I want to present a number of tools and techniques that I that I'm using for, for to, to reach these goals. I'm not a trained specialist in, in any of this, except that I've been doing that for a long time and it's been, it's been working most of the time, uh, not without challenges, but it's been working. So I'll show a few examples and some simple techniques that you can use to, to get to more, more um, you know, clear and more 
um, concise writing. Uh, one of the most important things, you know, if you if you want to to watch a movie, here I'm showing a, a IMDb page, for example. If you want to 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 watch, you see this page, and uh, you you want to decide whether you want to to watch this movie or not. There's a multi-level decision process. First, you see the title, whatever works, ah, appeals to me. That's actually a movie we watched a, a few weeks ago with my wife and enjoyed it. Um, yeah, whatever works. That sounds, you know, I'm, I'm a bit teased by this title. I want to know more. Um, and then uh, at the bottom here, there's the uh, the abstract, middle-aged, misanthropic divorcee from New York City and so on, um, which gives me more information. And at every at every level, I, I'm, I will decide, do I want to go further or not? You know, if I don't like the title, oh, it's over. I don't watch this movie. If I don't like the abstract, I stop here. And then I might look at the trailer. It takes me one, two minutes. And then, oh, okay, I like the trailer. So now I decide maybe to, to see the movie. And, it, you know, it's really this multi-level decision process. And I think the same thing is extremely useful in our, uh, when you, in our written communications. And you should try to uh, make that happen in your messages. Here's an example that, uh, of a message that I wrote uh, a while ago about reviewing website content. And you see here these different um, levels. First, subject line. Okay, it says very clearly, it's about the website. If you're not interested in a website, stop. You know, you, I'm out. First level of decision, please review the stage board content. If I'm not interested in doing that, I can stop now. So I can, maybe I have spent three, four seconds looking at that message, and I, I can already decide to go further or not. Second level, I have a small introduction in my message. Oh, that section of the website is built from SVN. Uh, I want to I suggest switching it to a different uh, way of generating it. That gives enough context to the reader to decide, OK, well, yeah, I want to know more. So I'll read more from that message, or maybe not. I stop. Second level takes a bit more time, and then you decide to read further or not. And then the body has references; it has uh, you know URLs, so you can get more information. But it's not too long. Instead of you know copying the information, I refer to external URLs where you can look uh, at if you're interested or not. Uh, again, multi-level way of uh, reading that message, and it's really crafted so that the reader, who's busy people in this case, can decide to, uh, you know, uh, if it makes sense for them to to dig deeper without spending too much time. Whereas if if the message was not as well structured, you would need to spend much more time to decide if it's interesting for you or not. And then the last, the last part, last section, here's what's next. I'm expressing, I'll talk about that later, uh, really, but breaking the message in sections with multiple levels of decision for the reader to decide if they want to read or not is i think very useful and it's not complicated if you think in the you know if you think with this uh, this mindset and being concise in writing takes work you know on the left you have the text that i had on the previous slide provide readers with multiple decision points to stop reading if not interested in the next level of detail that's clear it's not ambiguous uh, it's concise, just, uh, you know, uh, a few words. And then on the right, I, okay, I did a bit joking on purpose, but th this text on the left could have been as long as the one on the right. The one on the right doesn't really say more than the left version, but it's much longer and it's noisy and it's much more complicated and much more, you know, tiring and boring to read. So naturally, uh, we might end up with the, the, the rightmost version here, the long version. And then you, you, know, you switch from drunk to sober, as they say, and, um, and you, you put your editor hat on and you look at this, OK, what can I remove? Can I, you know, this parenthesis, shall we say decision points, can I make that more active and, and, uh, and, and not need the parenthesis and so on? Um, and the last uh, phrase, I hope I'm being clear. Uh, we know you want to be clear. You know, it doesn't bring anything to the conversation. So what I'm saying here is that it takes work. Uh, and, and you you should, uh, if, if you're interested in doing that, I hope you are, uh, you should work on it. You, you know, it, it's 
there, or you might take a course in, in writing or read books or articles, I don't know, but it takes work. For me, I've been you know, working on that in the many years in the open source communities and in my work as well. I think it's very, very uh, useful and very effective. So, uh, uh, you know, I like I like working on that. A good exercise, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm using Twitter for my uh, professional, um, you know, uh, social network. Uh, Twitter used to be 140 characters. Now they have doubled it. But it, it's it's always an interesting challenge. Can I say what I want to say in one tweet in this case? Uh, and, you know, you have to, to reformulate, reduce, make more concise without losing the, the gist of what you want to say. I think it's a great exercise and it's, it's really worth working on that. Uh, speaking of simplicity and, and conciseness, there are examples in the industry. This um, the standard here, ASD ST100, is a standard for technical documentation in a controlled language. It's used uh, especially for air, um, the airplane's technical documentation. You know, if you build an airplane, you want people from all around the world to be able to maintain it or at least do some maintenance on it. The instructions have to be as simple as possible. And they have defined the standard uh, vocabulary, reduced vocabulary, uh, a writing style that makes things easier to understand. You also have an example here with these two texts. Uh, the, the, the blue text on the right are much easier to understand, much less, um, you know, much less ambiguous than, than the, the other part. And that's that's a good recommendation. Even if you, even if you're a native English speaker, trained in literature, I don't know, it's really useful to, to use stick to a very simple vocabulary when you're writing on our um, uh, you know community channels where there are people from different uh, with various levels of, of uh, English knowledge and, and practice. So uh, you know sticking to a simpler vocabulary can also be very helpful. Another technique that I use and I think is very useful is the self-contained messages. Um, maybe you have some friends when you're using a chat channel that will start sending one message. Hello. Yes. What, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you. You know, they will send like 10 messages before asking their question. It's, it's a bit, for me, it's a bit boring. Um, but uh, it can work on a chat channel. On a slower channel, like a mailing list that uh, we use at the Apache Software Foundation or in a ticket, it does, that doesn't work. You know, if if your your conversation requires 10 messages for every question, uh, it's not going to work. So it's very useful to create these self-contained messages, like this example here. I think this message has everything, you know, it's not calling for more questions. Of course, maybe I'm, I forgot something or something is not fully clear, but if everything go, works well, this message is sufficient for people to decide, do they want to be involved in this effort of, re of reviewing the stage board content? And, you know, what will happen next? And here I'm saying, uh, I'm using the, the so-called lazy consensus technique saying, okay, I'll, I have exposed what I want to do. I'll wait for, the, if there is any discussion, I will wait for it to settle down, and then I will make things happen unless uh, someone objects. And it's very useful. You know, make your message self-contained as much as possible so it doesn't prompt dozens of sub-questions and, and longer conversations than, than strictly needed. It's also something that you need to work on, uh, but, you you know, you can create your, your review questions is, as, as does my message have all the information for people to take action or to decide that they don't want to take action, that they're not involved in that, uh, that that's very useful. So that's, uh, you, you see people talking about that, uh, about uh, chat messages saying, you know, when you ask a question on chat, don't just say hello, but ask your question in the first message already. And in email or in, in tickets, we should do the same thing. Be self-contained in, in our messages. Related to that, there's a technique called rad radiating intent. Um, I'm a cyclist. I use my bike all the time to, to go places, to commute. And it's very important if you want to stay alive on a bike in, in a city to be very uh, you know, obvious about what you intend to do. I intend to go left or I just move my bike to the center of the lane to, uh, to express that I don't want anyone to pass me right now because it would be dangerous and so on. There's many ways in when cycling to, to express your intentions. And this is what we see here from the hand signals image 
uh, images on or from Wikipedia. And you can do the same in your messages. There's a great book, I have the references at the bottom of this slide, um, a book called Turn the Ship Around by David Marquet. Um, he, it's about people working on military ships and where they, they started having a culture of radiating intent, where people would say, for example, uh, Captain, I intend to stop the engine in 10 minutes because we're now in port and we don't need it anymore. You know, instead of asking for permission, you express what you want to do and you leave space for people to object if they disagree with what you're planning to do. We can do this. <coughs> We can do the same in our messages. And that's ex exactly what I did at the end of this message that we saw on the previous slide, saying, I'll wait for the discussion to settle down before taking action. I'm radiating intent. I'm you know, expressing what I intend to do and let, let space for people to object by saying, if there's any discussion, it might not happen like that. But that's the happy case where everybody agrees and we go forward. There's also an article by Elizabeth Ayer on Medium. You have the link here. About this, which you know, which explains the the concept in more more detail. Uh, precise quoting is a very it's a pet thing of mine. I'm very attached to that. I think it's very important. You know, it's the old style quoting in messages in the in the old times when email bandwidth was restricted. We tried to make the message very short in terms of number of bytes and characters. So that that's this style of quoting where you quote in line. You know, you have a, a, the, the block from the previous message, you mark it, and then you reply to that, then another block, and you reply to that, and you use ellipses to say, okay, I omitted parts of the original message, but I'm just quoting the parts to which I'm replying. This makes the discussion, can make the discussion much more precise. I would say without precise quoting, all discussions are shallow. When you see people, you know, top quoting messages and saying, I agree. And there's a big block, what you agree to exactly. You agree to 0.1, 2, or 3. You know, with precise quoting, you can be much more precise and, and help keep the conversation on track and not uh, deviate or or avoid mis misunderstanding by be being much clearer. It's a bit uh, complicated to, if you're working on mobile devices, can be very painful to, to do. Some mail clients are terrible about that, uh, so that it can be a challenge. Uh, but you can use the same technique, for example, in tickets. If you you know, if you have a GitHub issue or, or Bugzilla or Jira ticket, you can use the same thing. Be precise in what you quote, so it's obvious what you are replying to or what you're accepting, and, and so on. There's also a wiki page on that, which explains that in in a bit more detail. But it's usually, uh, you know, the, the principle is usually well known. It's a practice that's often lacking. And then the last. Um, Next to last item, the you know in these techniques, uh, it's good to create your own set of reworking questions when you're working on your messages to make them clear and concise. It's good to have a list of questions such such, such as the ones shown here. What else, can I remove more things from my message? Should I maybe write the details elsewhere and then just ping people to say, hey, go look there. I wrote the details there in a ticket or on a wiki page, something. Or try to look at your message from the reader's point of view. Would I read all this or would I be bored after three lines? Uh, do I need more URL references to be more precise and so on? These, these are basic questions and maybe it's good for you to, to create your own set of questions when you rework, when you improve your messages uh, before sending them, hopefully. And the last uh, technique, which... Uh, should be obvious, but it's not always uh, easy to use depending on the channels that you're using, is to use diagrams. You know, purposely uh, the, the part of the, the left part of this slide is a bit, has a high cognitive load. You know, it's a bit complicated to read because of the angles and stuff. On the right, it's obvious. You know, can, how can you make it easier to go from A to B? Diagrams are so powerful and sometimes we are too uh, shy or too lazy to use them. and that, if I have a complicated topic, I like to create a diagram, take the time to do that, and then the explanations are much easier. So part of the, the you know the communication tools and techniques that you can use. And that's it. So that you know that's my view on the the, the different techniques that you can use to make your uh, messages more uh, concise and clear to help our conversations in our communities. 
the three points that I would like uh, suggest that you you remember for, from this. The first one is that when you are writing, you're architecting a conversation, not just writing a quick message, unless it's a quick question, which is different, you know, which is doesn't need all, all this complexity because it's uh, it's simple in itself. But in, in you know, in serious, in, in complicated, in design discussions, you're actually architecting the conversation, depending on the way you write your message. Being clear and concise is more work for you. That's obvious, but it's for the benefit of the project and for the community. You know, if you have, uh, if you're on the mailing list with uh, your one writer and there's maybe 50 people reading it, by spending 10 more minutes, you maybe you 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 save five more minutes, five minutes for each one of these 50 people, which overall is is really worth it. And then the written form debate is hard. We know that. So it's worth working on it, you know, working on your conciseness, working on your clarity, uh, maybe, you know, having reviewing some mes messages with, with people from your team from time to time to, to get ideas on how to, to improve it. And I think it's really worth doing in terms of improving your community's uh, conversations. And the goal really is, we could say, is to have happy readers. You know, think of your readers when you're writing, and this will help you be more, more effective. That's it. So that's what I had to say on this uh, this topic. We have just, uh, if I see right, two and a half minutes for questions. But after that, I'll, I'll jump to the um, uh, to the breakout room if you have more questions or want to to discuss anything. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your talk, Bertrand. Um, yeah, questions from. Um hopefully concise and uh, clear <laughs> questions um, from our chat are, um, uh, do you have an example about how to add such strategic communication architecture as part of the contributor guidelines of a project? Um, yeah, I think that that's a great, uh, the great thing. We, um, sometimes you see, you, probably we did that more in the past where you had pages about the so-called netiquette you know the etiquette to have when, when discussing things so i think it's good to to document this and and th there's probably lots of things uh, you know lots of existing material material around this and it's a really good idea i think to refer to that in your in your contributing guidelines also because it helps i know i have some people some busy people that i'm that i'm working with the, short me the shorter the message that I send them, the more chance I have that they will read it. So that, you know, that's advice that you can really give to, to, to newcomers. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's a great idea to put that in your contributor guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, next question is, um, huh, what, what, I'm not sure if I understand this correctly. I'll just read it out. Um, the person would be curious about your opinion on how uh, about conventional commits use of emojis because indeed written communication is hard. Yeah, I didn't touch on the emojis. Uh, I ha actually, I was thinking of putting something about them because I think they can be very useful actually. Emojis are, are abused a lot you know you see uh, sometimes i'm like that you put lots of smileys and stuff it doesn't bring anything but emojis can be very effective especially on chat channels um where you know instead of replying to a message you can just send an emo emoji say yeah i agree you know thumbs up yeah. or um and i think they can actually help be more concise so i totally agree mm -hmm. but it would be good to have some examples in your community or so so they're not abused but they're a nice form of very short message. Agree. 